Hi, Purple Jenny here. Thanks for tuning in and listening to this wonderful book. It's an old one, published in 1950. T-Bone, The Babysitter, Stories and Pictures by Claire Tule Newberry. Mr. and Mrs. Penny were very lucky to have a good babysitter. His name was T-Bone and he was a large, kindly black and white cat. While Mrs. Penny did the housework, T-Bone sat with the, the baby. He sat with her in her bassinet when she took her airing on the porch. He sat with her in her playpen while she played with her toys. And when she took her nap, T-Bone sat on the dresser beside her crib and purred till she fell asleep. Sometimes he pushed her in her swing, but mostly he just sat. Of course, being only a cat, there were some things that he could not do. He was no good with bottles or safety pins, nor was he expected to give the baby her bath. But when it came to just plain sitting, he was perfect. But one morning, T-Bone did not feel like babysitting. He woke up feeling wild and pouncy and full of mischief. <laughs> uh oh. Oh no. When the baby was getting her bath, he got into the drawer where her clean clothes were kept and scratched them all out on the floor. Bad kitty, scolded Mrs. Penny, but T Bone did not care. He felt like being naughty. Uh oh. Oh, he scampered into the bathroom where Mrs. Penny's nylon stockings were drying on the towel rack and pulled them all down. Shame on you, T-Bone, cried Mrs. Penny. But T-Bone just grabbed a stocking and ran with it under the sofa. When it was time for the baby's nap, T-Bone did not sit on the dresser and purr. He climbed up on the highest shelf in the clothes closet where Mrs. Penny kept her hats and knocked them all off on the floor. Then he pounced on one of them, a small pink feather hat, and began to rip it to pieces. <sighs> The baby thought that was very funny. She sat up in her crib and laughed out loud. Now why isn't that baby asleep? Wondered Mrs. Penny and she went into the bedroom to see. <laughs> oh. And there was T-Bone tearing up her nicest hat the one she wore to parties when she wanted to look especially pretty. T-Bone, you awful, awful cat, screamed Mrs. Penny. And if she had not been a grown-up lady, I believe she would have cried. Just ah! then, Aunt Mabel, who lived in the country, drove up in her station wagon. I she was quite it. shocked to hear what a bad cat T-Bone had been. My dear girl, exclaimed Aunt Mabel, how ridiculous to keep such an animal in your house. The only place for a cat like that is in the country. You had better let me take him back to the ranch 
with me. He can live in the barn and catch mice. Take him by all means, cried Mrs. Penny, who was feeling very cross about the big pink hat. I don't think I could stand another day of him. So Aunt Mabel gathered up T-Bone, bundled him into the back of the seat of the station wagon and drove off. Look what happened next. Oh no, a lot of words. The next day, when the baby was put on the porch for her airing, she began to cry for there was no T-bone to sit with her. Her mother put her in the playpen with all her toys, but she would not play with them. She just cried and cried for T-bone. When it was time for her nap, she would not go to sleep for there was no T-bone purring on the dresser. She sat up in her crib and cried and cried and cried. So Mrs. Penny rocked the baby to comfort her and sang songs to her and played peek a and pat a cake. And this little pig went to market over and over and over. But the moment Mrs. Penny stopped to rest, the baby remembered how sad she was without T-Bone and cried louder than ever. <laughs> so Poor thing. And it's just that funny. picture, so. I'll just show you the picture part. Mrs. Penny did, yeah, there's a lot of words in this book, hmm. Mrs. Penny did not have time to wash the dishes or make the beds or run the vacuum cleaner or anything. And when Mr. Penny came home that evening, there was no dinner on the table for Mrs. Penny had not had time to cook it. Oh, Walter, she wailed as she saw her husband. We should never have let T-Bone go. The baby has been crying for him all day long. Darling, we simply must get him back. Of course, of course, honey, anything you say, Mr. Penny agreed soothingly. I'll drive out to Aunt Mabel's for him tomorrow, if you wish. I'll tell him all is forgiven. Out in the country, T-Bone was not happy either. There was altogether too much barking and neighing and mooing to suit his taste. Besides, there was a fierce rooster that kept chasing him all over the barnyard. Worst of all, he was hungry, for Aunt Mabel believed that a saucer of milk was enough for any cat. It's not enough. It's just a picture right there. When T-Bone asked her politely for meat, she looked at him coldly and said, Go catch a mouse! That was easier said than done, for T-Bone had grown quite stout from so much babysitting. He was so glad to see Mr. Penny the next day that he jumped right into the car beside him and purred all the way home. Oh, when T-Bone got home, he found a delicious lunch waiting for him under the kitchen table. Warm milk with cereal in it and all the liver he could eat and nothing whatever was said about pink feather hat. But the happiest of all was the baby. She shrieked with delight when she saw T-Bone and hugged him and hugged him. Then she gave them all a big surprise. She said a real sure enough word. Her, and her very first word was kitty. The end. I hope you enjoyed this video, this book. It's very good.